everyone. My last video was about how my Cyclops glitched to be 2 billion meters underwater and how I had to edit the game save files to rescue it. And in doing so, uh, through the course of editing the save files, I noticed something interesting about the save files that I want to play around with in this video. And we'll see how this goes. I'm going to go ahead and make a new creative mode game to try it out. Um, but basically what I noticed was that the game doesn't just save position X, Y, and Z for all the objects in the game. It also stores rotation, right? So which way your vehicle is pointing. Uh, but the third thing that it stores is scale. So how big something is. And I don't think Subnautica, the game, ever uses scale. Um, I've never noticed anything really changing size in the game. I don't think anything has any reason to do that. But it's still in the game's files. And if the game's not going to change it, if we change it, I'm really curious to figure out what happens if we do that. All of this is betting on the fact that the game hopefully doesn't care if we modify the scale. Uh, if the game crashes because we change the scale, then obviously it's not going to get us very far. All right, I, I really need this game to shut up now. <laughs> yeah, motivation on note. Thank you. Okay, so we're here in a new game, and I think the first thing that I want to do is make sure that I have a base. I need a moon pool to modify the f uh, these vehicles. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's see. And I want to do it somewhere relatively deeper uh, so that we can mess around the Cyclops later. So how about let's make a multi-purpose room? All right, so let's make a multi-purpose room and then we can make some glass tunnels. And then let's make the moon pool here. Oops, I think that's misaligned. Yep. Cool. We have ourselves a base now. Legs are not really working, but that's okay. Right, power. I don't think creative mode really cares about power, so I think one solar panel is enough. Okay, and then last thing we need, we need the vehicle modification bay, or sorry, the upgrade console. Cool. Okay, so my plan here is I'm going to spawn a few different sea moths to experiment with. And to help us find these data points in the data file, uh, I'm going to give them different names. So let's see. Spawn sea moth. Cool. Spawn sea moth. Spawn sea moth. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and uh, rename all these sea moths so that I can tell them apart. This is kind of annoying actually. I'm just going to build another. Can I? Oh, it doesn't let me build two vehicle upgrade consoles. Whatever. Um, so this sea moth will be... I want, I want to make a really little sea moth. I want to see what happens if we do that. Let's make this a... Uh, Oh, that's a nice color. Okay. So this one, this is the Seamoth XS, extra small. And then I'll make an extra big Seamoth. I'm actually going to move this. This is kind of annoying me. Okay, so this will be the Seamoth XL. Uh, yeah, good enough. Cool. So I've got Seamoth number one, Seamoth number two, 
And then we have our control group, so to speak, uh, the regular CMOS. And let me start editing the files. Gonna save this, quit. Okay, so I'm gonna open my save games data and uh, it's in a folder called Localo, Unknown World, Subnautica, Subnautica, save games, slot one. That's the newest one, right? Yes, so there are a few important files in here. Uh, game info.json, that just has stuff like how long you've been playing, what mode you're in. Screenshot, um, obviously that is the screenshot. So why don't we just, um, ta-da, scene objects. Uh, I'm pretty sure that file has all the temporary stuff for the area that you're in. And then global objects has things like vehicles. Um, I think the life pod and mobile vehicle bay are also part of global objects. But basically things that are permanent, things that are always loaded into the game no matter where you are. So that's the one we want to edit. I'm going to bring up my fancy text editor. All right. Oops. Okay, so we have the file loaded up. Global object stop in. And what we're going to do is, since I've named the different CMOTs, I'm just going to search by their name. I know that's stored in the game, uh, in the game save files, like so. And there we have it, CMOTH extra small. And naming them also helps us find them within the file, because there are a lot of things in here. So it's not just vehicles, it's also all the items, including things like power cells in the vehicles. Uh, it contains, like, um, I'm pretty sure things like the contents of lockers and stuff like that. Here, we know uh, just from past experience, if you saw my previous video, we found that the unity engine.transform object that comes right before the name, that's the one that we want. Um, we know this is CMOTH, we know which one it is, and here's a transform for that. And we can kind of double check just by looking at this. Um, so this transform object, it has a few more bytes, and then starting here, that's the position. So x is 136, y is minus 36, so 36 meters below sea level, and then z is minus 350. So all of that looks reasonable, so I'm pretty confident that this is what we want. Um, after this, though, we need to find uh, the rotation So let's see, where do we start off? Transform, so we have x, y, z, and then a few more bytes. So rotation starts here. And I think all the rotation quaternions uh, are probably between minus one and one. So let's see, minus 0.01, uh, minus 0 0.99, 0 0.04, and then one more. Okay, so that's rotation. So if I'm not mistaken, starting here should be scale. So we have scale of x uh, equals 1, y equals 0.999, uh, z is exactly 1. Which I think this is kind of weird. I don't know why these numbers wouldn't just be exactly 1. Like somewhere in the game is some floating point messiness or bugginess that's causing these floating points that should be exactly one to be kind of close to one. Um, whatever. We know Subnautica is buggy. That's not why we like the game. So let's just live with it. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all of these with, let's see, this is a CMOT that I want to make small. So I'm going to try putting in 0.5 here. And if my intuition is correct, this should make the CMOT exactly half as big as it should be. So here, um, I'm also gonna put in 0.5, and then this one, 0.5, cool. Um, and then the next one that I was gonna edit is the extra large CMOTH, CMOTH XL. And where, okay, transform starts here, AF, D, so, okay, so starting here is position, X, Y, Z, 
uh, starting here's rotation. Let's see, go one, two, three, four rotation values. And again, we have slightly messed up scale, but that's okay. We're gonna replace that with 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0.5. All right, so I saved the file. Let's see what Subnautica does. Um, I'm really hoping that the game doesn't just crash, but given that we, we edited the save file to save my Cyclops in the last video, there was so much stuff wrong with that save file, but the game still loaded. It still worked, other than everything that was glitched. So the game seems pretty tolerant of the save file. Um, I doubt it's going to complain if the scale's not one, because apparently we just saw the scale's already not one. Uh, did it did it work? Let's see. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, I didn't do this right. What I meant to do was CMOT XL. Let's try this again. I meant to put in point, uh, instead of 0.5, put in two, because for this extra large CMOT, I want to actually double the size. Okay, so 0.5. Instead, I want to put in two. So hopefully, this will make a CMOT that's twice as big as they normally are. Save. Let's load the game again. Okay, okay. Oh my god, it worked. It worked. Holy shit. Check this out. <laughs> okay, I want to just see the side-by-side -side comparison. Oh my god, that is... In that is... <laughs> oh, it really is twice as big. It honestly it doesn't look twice as big when you just swim up to it because I have no depth perception, right? Like, I'm not playing VR. And if I just swim around it, it, it doesn't look that big. But if I put it up against an actual regular Seamoth, yeah, you can actually tell it. It is twice as big. And this one is just, <laughs> it's pretty cute. It's tiny. Uh, okay, that's a little weird. But yeah, I'm just going to park this right up against this sea moth. Yeah, look at that. Look at how small it is. Wow. Okay, I'm going to I want I want to get in the big sea moth. Welcome aboard. Captain. Uh Okay. <laughs> this sea moth is just clipping through the other sea moth. That's that's a little weird. Um Obviously, no one tested it with extra large C mods, but I'm surprised that the game is uh, is not freaking out. Like I kind of thought that the game would just screw everything up and crash. Can I can I park this? Do you think the moon pool would take a? Oh, oh, it's working! It's working! Uh, <laughs> I'm stuck. Help! Oh, that that's hilarious. Oh wow. <laughs> I think it still works, right? Like I can still change the colors and all that. Yeah. Orange, orange. Orange is a nice look. Can I get oh okay. Okay. I can get back in at least. Okay, so I I wanna try something different. I think this works surprisingly well. What if I made it an even bigger change? Just let me save the game real quick, quit out of this, and I am going to edit the files again. Okay, so I'm going to reload this, and let's find the extra small. I, I think 50% was pretty cool, but it, surprisingly it wasn't as different as I thought it would be. Like, yes, it is 50% smaller, but it doesn't feel crazy. So let's try something crazy. Um, here's the transform again. Here's where I put in 50%, 0.5. What if I put in like, 
like 0.1 like a like a sea moth that's one tenth the size okay so we're dealing with some floating point imprecision here uh, 0.1 is not really representable in floating point not in a 32-bit float so whatever should be fine okay so on to the next one if we made the small seamoth 10% the size I think the big seamoth needs to be 10x bigger 1000% the size all right seamoth seamoth xl transform where are we okay this is where I put in two and and somehow the game messed up my numbers again I, I now have something slightly above two slightly under two two again Okay, so instead of two, let's do 10. Uh, okay, what was 10? 0, 0, 20, 41. 0, 0, 20, 41, 20. Yeah, that's 10. 0, 0, 20, 41. Okay. So now I should have, fingers crossed, if I did this correctly, I should have a 10x bigger Seamoth and a 10x smaller Seamoth. Oh, it's dark. Here, let me uh, make it daytime. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> it is gigantic. Oh my god. Like, I'm just swimming around it. Oh, oh my god, is that my... Oh, it's so tiny! This is the little one. The sea moth, you, you can kind of read it. The sea moth XS. And hello, everyone. I present to you the sea moth XL, the uh, semi truck of sea moths. And, and you know what? I have no idea what happened to the regular sea moth. Did I, did I lose it somehow? Oh, no, no, no. It's over here. Yeah, so let me drive this over <laughs> for a better comparison. Boom. This is hilarious. <laughs> this this is just outrageous. Dude, the sea moth is bigger than like two moon pools end to end. Like you could put two of these moon pools uh, in a row, and I think this sea moth would still be bigger. Actually, let's let's try that. All right, so which one is longer, moon pool or my sea moth? <laughs> oh my god, I was right. This is like, yeah, the 10x sea moth is actually longer then two moon pools end to end. And the mini sea moth. Actually, let's see if I can even get in the mini sea moth. Welcome aboard, Captain. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's kind of a messed up view. And are, are those my hands? Like my hands are like these giant, oh my God, I have like giant, literally a giant's hands. gonna actually I'm gonna dock it in this one. Welcome aboard captain. Get out. Oh my god, it's it's so small. It's like a little RC toy. <laughs> and it's just kinda like floating there. It's it's not actually held in place by these arms. Do you think the game will let me dock the the big seamoth? Like if I get in, and I don't, I don't even know how this is gonna work because I have to drive underneath somehow. Oh, uh, I think I might be able to fit. No? Oh, oh, it's taking it, it's taking it. What the hell is even going on here? <laughs> Look at this, the, the seat is like 
underwater. And oh my god, I'm in the sea moth. Um, but I'm swimming around inside the sea moth. And wow, there's, there's no collision. Can I? Dude, these these upgrade tubes are like big enough to fit myself inside. Yeah, everyone, it, it's not about putting the sea moth in the moon pool anymore. <laughs> it's about putting the moon pool in the sea moth now. <laughs> just, uh, just uh, really turning things on the head now. Wow, okay. Man, and with the lid open, it actually looks like I'm just swimming in the sea moth and then, and then swimming into the moon pool where come on matter where the sea moth it is docked there uh here's a smaller one and here literally all you can see is the chair it's just like a giant chair in the moon pool wow holy crap actually i want to i want to get back into the sea moth how do i do that is it even going to let me get back in? Oh, yep, yeah, yep, I can get back in at least. All systems online. Okay, I I don't know what just happened there, but I'm out. I'm kind of curious, like... Yeah, I don't think this 10x CMOS is actually 10x faster. It looks exactly uh, like the same speed that the regular CMOS is. And I'm bumping into stuff. Which, uh, yeah, I kind of thought that would happen. Like, I had no reason to think that a, t a CMOS that's 10x bigger is going to move 10x faster. Like, inside a game, that's just not how movement would be implemented. But I'm kind of disappointed. Like, it would have been really cool to be able to go 10x faster. Uh, I guess the plus side of that is that the t that the CMOS that's 10x smaller is still the same speed as a regular CMOS. Like, I wouldn't want this thing to be 10x slower, right? Okay. Oh, look at my huge hands! What? What is even going on here? What is this white stuff? Yo, <laughs> yo, that 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 biter is is gonna eat my sea moth. Holy crap! Caution. Continued degradation of the auroras. Okay, uh, <laughs> I do not know what all this like Continued white flashing light is, and I. I also do not know why this was not happening the first time I got in. That's kind of disappointing. Um, but yeah, I think with the sea moth, I can actually fit in all of the small caverns. I'm gonna try that. Oh yes, these tunnels. Oh my god, yeah, I fit right in. Yo, can I go through this uh, coral? Like if I just... Oh shit, shit, what happened? Am I stuck? No, I'm not stuck. I will say though, it's really hard to gauge whether you're gonna hit something or not. Okay, I did realize one downside of moving at the same speed, but being 10x smaller, is that your movements just feel really fast. Because you can fit through 10x smaller spaces, but every time you push a movement key, you're still moving the same distance, so everything suddenly becomes really like touchy and twitchy. Wow! Oh my God! Look, <laughs> it's it's like a spaceship. It really is. Okay, th there's one more thing that I wanted to try here, uh, and give me a sec. I will tell you what it is. Okay, so far, we've been setting all of the scale values the same. Like, if we made that CMOS 2x bigger, we made it 2x bigger 
X, Y, and Z. Uh, which is fine, I guess, but <laughs> what happens if we try setting the scale values to different things? Like this, this uh, small sea moth. I'm gonna try something different here. If I can find the scale again. Okay, point one. Point one. Point one. What should I do? X. What? What is the X coordinate even? Anyways, Y is probably up and down. X is maybe left to right. I'm guessing. And then maybe Z is like front to back. So I'm gonna make the X, I'm gonna set that back to one. And then I'm gonna set the other two, I'm gonna set Y to 0.5. It'll be kind of flat. And uh, Z, yeah, let's set that to 0.5 as well. And then CMOS, the other one, let's see. Oh, I can make like a limo sea moth. Like it'll be regular size. Okay, so one in the X and Y. Again, this is based off completely 100% a guess that X is left to right. Um, y will be one, so it'll be the same size uh, regular height. And then for the length, I'll just make it like three. Is that a good number? Three X's long. I guess limos, are limos three X's long as regular cars? Okay. Hopefully the game doesn't just barf. Like I'm pretty happy that modifying the scale in all three dimensions equally worked just fine. So if that worked just fine, I think it goes to show that the game doesn't really care what save values, what scale values it reads. Oh yeah, it's working. It's oh, you know, you know, from this angle, it it, it looks completely normal, and then from this angle, it looks like um, it looks like that lens distortion when you have a really super wide angle lens, and you have stuff in the side. <laughs> it, am I gonna be stretched? Like, welcome aboard, Captain. This this feels pretty normal. Uh, I think stuff's longer, right? Oh, like, let me get in the regular CMOS for comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those two green screens in front of me, like, that was normal size. This thing, this thing is stretched. And oh my god, what, what the... F Oh no! No, the sea, the sea moth stretch me. <laughs> Wait, am I still? Oh no! <laughs> oh, I think I think either getting in or getting out of the sea moth has has also stretched my player character. This. <laughs> so. So, uh, I'm not sure I want to find- yeah, actually, I do want to find out what happens when I get in here. Welcome aboard, Captain. Yes, I'm very long. This is like the limo of sea moths. And my hands are- my hands are not even on the steering wheel. I'm just controlling it with my mind right now. And, okay, I'm definitely stretched bigger somehow, like. Like, I think I've been stretched in two dimensions now, and, like, yeah, look, look at look at this lamp. Wait. <laughs> Actually, the lamp looks fine, kind of. Something looks weird about it. Congratulations, survivor. You have exceeded your weekly exercise quotient by 500. Can I? I bet I can still park this in the moon pool. Welcome aboard, 
Huh. I <laughs> I want to call it the limo of sea moths. It kind of looks like that, but you know, I don't think it's worth getting a limo if it's just gonna screw up your body proportions. I'm gonna start having some body image issues because of this. So if if every time I get in the sea moth, it messes with my body. I wonder what happens if I just like keep getting in over and over. Like I'm gonna eventually be stretched. Oh my god, it's it's already getting worse. <laughs> That was what, f three times? Four times? Oh no! <laughs> Wait... I just... You know, one thing I didn't think to check was if getting in a stretch sea moth stretches you out in one direction, does getting in a bigger sea moth stretch you out? Like, does that make you bigger in all directions? That would be really interesting to accept. Uh, I, what, what, what is even? Oh no, I'm so fat. I'm so fat, I can't fit in the moon pool anymore. I'm literally so fat that the game is not letting me walk through the base. <laughs> like, I can fit through the bottom of the moon pool, but... I think just my player is so big right now that it's not it's not letting me go forward, no matter how hard I try. And um, I can't, can't really jump, can't... Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm actually just several meters fat right now. Okay, I, I, I think I'm done for today. <laughs> this was pretty fun, but I think next video, I'm gonna try out the other vehicles, so I still need to try this out, see what happens for a prawn suit. Uh, that might be interesting. And then Cyclops. I think, I think the Cyclops one, messing with the scale of a Cyclops will be the most interesting one, because I have all sorts of questions about that. Like, I don't expect it to be very good. I, I expect the game to kind of mess up because the Cyclops is kind of the most finicky vehicle in the game because of how much stuff it has to do. Like you can you can plant stuff inside the Cyclops, you can put other vehicles in it. Um, like with a Cyclops, like would a regular sized Cyclops take a sea moth that's 10X the size or or what if we put like a tiny prawn suit inside a giant cyclops? Like, I would be really curious to s try that out and see what happens. Anyways, if you have any other ideas, let me know in the comments. Um, I, I don't understand enough of the save file yet to probably try out everything that I would wanna do, but at least messing with the transform objects, uh, that's pretty well established. We know how to do that now and we do know about strings and maybe some other things in the save file. Um, I think thoroughly understanding the save file is probably going to require looking into more of the actual game code because some, some of the things like the different fields and stuff for each of the objects, those aren't explained anywhere in the save file. They're not labeled or anything. They're just there. And it's up to the game to interpret it based on the game's code. So. I don't know how much we'd actually be able to figure out from the save file without just brutal amounts of trial and error, but I'm down to try it because this has been really funny so far and I think we could probably push the game to do even crazier things in the future.